Election 2011 coverage on Manx Radio, brought to you by PDMS. Exactly 11 minutes past eight and our final election candidate of the morning is a professional chef. John Caron will contest Douglas East on September the 29th. He says work commitments have always prevented him from standing in the past, but now at the age of 62 he's ready to give it a go. Good morning, Mr Caron. Good morning. Giving it a go is one thing, of course, making it a difference to, if you get elected is another. What do you believe you can offer the people of East Douglas and perhaps more importantly the island? Well, the island is obviously the most important part at the moment with national politics. Um, I would just uh, just a little bit of tenacity, I think. Follow follow up and ask the questions, and just follow up until we get the right answers or get an answer. Sometimes the government has sometimes. Do you believe that's been an area we we perhaps not pushed hard enough in certain issues in in the past? I certainly think so. Yes. Yeah. Politics, often the art of persuasion, of course, often about that. How well equipped would you be to stand against people and alongside people who've had a fairly long political career in some cases? I can work with uh, with anyone, you know. So you, you have to you have to take a uh, an attitude that you've got to get along with uh, people, even those that you disagree with. Uh, you've just got to work together and uh, find find the solutions that we need at the moment. Six candidates in East Douglas, potentially yes. a bit of a free for all. What are your priorities that perhaps separate you from the other challenges? Um, really, it's this sort of uh, the economic recovery. That that is the most important. We've That's what really got saying, to find creating jobs. Yeah, creating jobs, especially sort of in in the, the lower pay sectors where we can sort of bring those people up. Then uh, we'll we'll get more sort of revenue out of out of those people as well. In terms of that, how can you maintain services while doing that? Because obviously we're, we're in the, these times where austere times, if you like, where. We're going to have to make further cutbacks. I think I think each department is going to have to look uh, for sort of efficiency savings uh, initially because we can't uh, we can't simply start sort of dumping jobs out of the government. It's got to, there's got to be a, a changeover period where the private industry can can take over these jobs. It's got to be managed. So our approach needs to be sort of more proactive, dealing with the challenges we're facing. Um, proactive, and we've got to take people along with that. If people have got to trust the government that when the government say they have to do something that's not very good, uh, you know, we've got to know, well, OK, we can trust this government. If, if they're saying this, then they must be right. So communication's perhaps been a downfall, do you think? Oh, I think uh, communication's been dreadful, How actually, between go the government. some way to address that? Um, just just gaining people's confidence by sort of giving them information on on what is going on. Um, none of this having to drag information out of them. Even MHKs don't get uh, all the information that they should do. How are you intending to engage younger voters when you go knocking on doors? Um, I've no particular strategy for sort of uh, targeting any any age group. I'll treat I'll treat everyone the same. Um, I don't sort of, uh, I don't talk down to people just because they're, they're, they're youngsters, you know, 16-year-olds or but something. But do you think you have to almost go that extra mile to, to try and attract them to, to the polls? Uh, I think I think with some of the turnouts we get, we have to go that extra mile to, to drag everyone to the polls. It's Transient not, population, just... East Douglas, isn't it? L large it is, population yeah. of migrant workers as well. A lot of them presumably won't even be on the register. No, that that is a major problem. In fact, the, in fact, the register is a problem. There are people who have been there for a long time, but they won't they won't uh, sign the register because they they think oh it's, it's I'll get called up for jury duty or uh, you know maybe maybe the TV licensing people will use it to find to find out where I live. No, it, something has to be done to sort of get people initially to register and then make it easier for them to vote. You're finding this out now, of course, because you've declared fairly late. You, you say the reduction in government revenue from VAT should be addressed through a, a fairly quickly planned economic recovery strategy. Haven't we had that in place for a couple of years now since that initial VAT bombshell? Uh, well, we're not seeing much of it, are we? That's, that's what I mean. The government communication is uh, pretty poor on telling people what they're going to do, what, what needs to be done. They, they can come out and say, oh, this is what we're doing. But there's, there's nothing to sort of bring people along with the, with the sort of strategy that they, they've come up with so far. And have you got a political ambition at all? Other um, than past September the 29th? Yeah, get, 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 get elected uh, is my hope, of course, and then uh, just play a part in the government. I think everyone, every MHK has to play a part in, in uh, the departments and, uh, and in sort of forming a, a, an honest government.
Yeah, one that is sort of uh, honest with the people and honest within itself as well. Can you name just finally a particular individual, if elected, that you'd like to lead the island through that period? Well, everyone's very coy about this, but uh, no, I'd come straight out and say Phil Gaunt. I think he'll balance cuts with kindness. John Caron, thank you very much for coming in this morning. OK, thank you very much.